about 50% of our practice would involve the spine. And majority of this would be in relation to degenerative diseases, meaning the commonest being slip discs. That is a degenerative disease where the discs degenerate and they become soft and they pop out and cause pressure on the nerves and cause leg pain, back pain. So that will form the large majority of the spine cases that we will see. Sometimes because of the same process of degeneration, there is excessive movements of the spine more than normal, which may require stabilization. So that forms also a fairly large group of patients in this. Then occasionally we do see tumors and uh, other diseases like uh, uh, some congenital conditions, vascular conditions. So this forms the, the bulk of our cases in spine. Like in, in Delhi, I, as I said, about 50% would form my, my practice in spine. But uh, I go once a month to Guwahati and there I think it's about 90% of the cases are of uh, back pains and neck pains related to the spine. Here I tend to do slightly more of uh, brain cases compared to the spine. But overall, generally, if you look at the practice of neurosurgeons all over the country, the average neurosurgeon would be doing about 50% spine and 50% brain. Or maybe slightly more. Maybe 60% spine and 40% brain. There are a uh, uh, lot of things happening in spine. We see um, a lot of advancements in instrumentation, in operative techniques. We ourselves in Fortis at Gurgaon, we have a, a, you know, a top of the a range, uh, what we call the brain and spine suite where we have a CT scan inside the operation theater and a guidance system. So uh, that helps us tremendously in placing instruments and implants very accurately and therefore very safely. Uh, there is a trend towards going more and more minimalistic in spine surgery with the smallest incisions and therefore the least amount of tra trauma but without sacrificing the efficacy of these treatments. And I myself, I'm quite uh, uh, avid uh, follower of this uh, philosophy. And I like to do most of my procedures minimalistically. And uh, that helps patients a lot because it reduces the pain related to surgery so that they are back uh, mobile and back to their normal activities as uh, in the shortest time possible. A uh, spine problem. Uh, the first thing that we do is of course take the history. We try to do, identify where exactly the problem could be. Spine more than anywhere else in the nervous system is extremely important to exactly pinpoint where the problem could be. So not only just say that it's a spine problem, but even go down to the particular nerve that is being affected by that problem. Because when we operate, we cannot explore. We have to know exactly what we want to do. And for that to happen, the first thing is an extremely um, precise history taking and uh, a very thorough examination. Because on the basis of that, everything follows. Subsequently, of course, we do uh, scans, we do an MRI in the majority of people. Then we go ahead and do CT scans. And the whole point of all these investigations is basically to ratify what we've examined and diagnosed just on seeing the patient without any investigation. So, because on that depends your results. There has to be a correlation. When things correlate, the results are good. When things don't correlate, the results are questionable. 
So once we have done these investigations and we are reasonably sure that we are on the right track, then uh, we proceed ahead with the further treatment. Further treatment may be just pain management. So we have a pain specialist here who give uh, injections, sometimes radio frequency, radio frequency uh, coagulation of the nerves and various other procedures. And there will be some patients where we would just man manage with medicines and there will be the patients where surgery would be required. And as I said, with surgery we need to know precisely what we plan to do and um, uh, exactly the operative technique from what level to what level and these things are then decided on the basis of whatever examination and uh, imaging that we've done. The commonest operation that we do is for slip discs and I personally like to do again in a minimal invasive way. So I like to use tubes, very fine tubes and the whole idea of this is that we enter through the muscle. Uh, the muscle has fewer pain fibers and so the whole operation is much less painful. And then we have a selection of tube diameters and uh, well it's the, the bigger tube that we use is as big as my forefinger and the little tube is the size of my little finger so you can imagine these are the uh, tracks that we use to uh, remove the discs. Aside from that we have uh, procedures which are involved with fusion. Again uh, I like to do it minimalistically and there I would use uh, most commonly an incision which may be an inch in length so it's slightly bigger than for removing a disc and um, sometimes we can also do these what we call percutaneously where we make small nicks just where the screws go in and uh, the whole idea of all this is to reduce the pain and the trauma of surgery as far as possible. And with these techniques, even with very old people, very frail people, we are able to achieve um, good results with a high degree of safety.